Hello and welcome to our lecture today about pericarditis. Pericarditis just means that there's inflammation in the pericardial sac that is surrounding the heart. How does this inflammation happen? I really don't know. It can be an infection. Most likely it's a viral infection. A patient might complain about chest pain or shortness of breath that uh, increases whenever uh, uh, they're taking a deep breath or so. This can happen also after an MI within a few hours or also it can happen about two weeks after an MI. This is what is called as Dressler syndrome. And you might see that coming up in your exam. Post MI happens within days. Dressler syndrome happens within two weeks. Also, any kind of injury to the myocardium, let's say that someone had trauma or whatever, and they start having those um, um, abnormal symptoms, and then someone calls you about their EKG and you say, you know what, this looks like pericarditis. So anything that actually traumatizes uh, the heart, it might lead to such changes. Now, how can you diagnose pericarditis? A very common question. You gotta remember this. The patient would have diffuse ST elevations. And what I mean by diffuse in all the leads, except the right sided leads. Except the right sided leads. And those are V1 and AVR. So if you see ST elevation in a patient and just the general look of it, and you can say <clears throat> the patient has ST elevation everywhere, even if they have ST depression in V1 and AVR, this is what we call diffuse ST elevation. Always think that the patient might have pericarditis. But to add more, we see depressed PR segments and if you see this depressed PR with an elevated ST in the same lead make sure that you say it's pericarditis we hardly ever see depressed PR segments in other diseases so let me just show you how on an EKG this is a P wave and then you will see that it actually drops like that, that maybe someone has QRS. And then there's this ST elevation. You would call this an ST elevation. And this looks like a depressed PR. Also, whenever you, you are comparing those segments, make sure you compare it to the TP segment. TP. Whenever you want to compare if this is elevated or not, you compare it to the T and the P segment. Do not compare it to the previous PR or so. Okay? Now, depressed PR, ST elevation, multiple leads. Think about pericarditis. That will definitely happen to inferior leads and the lateral leads. If you look at AVR or V1, you might see the picture in another way. In AVR or V1, because they are right-sided leads, as we talked about the normal sinus rhythm lecture, the R wave is going to be negative. The P wave, sorry, is going to be negative. And then, because it's the other way around, you're going to see the PR elevated. And then you might see the ST, but instead of an elevation, you will have depression. And then you're going to see the other beat going on. So the PR will be elevated. The ST will be depressed. And this will only happen when you have a right-sided lead. The question will not, uh, will not show you this. They might just tell you, there's a patient who came in 
chest pain, shortness of breath, and it changes with respiration, changes with breathing. And then they might actually tell you this patient had sore throat, um, fever a week before, and they did an EKG and it shows diffuse ST elevations. They might not even mention um, anything about right-sided leads and they can also tell you that he has depressed PR. And this is the case where you think about pericarditis. And usually the treatment is symptomatic. The patient is not gonna die from this, but he's gonna have uh, chest pain, shortness of breath. Um, in, in, in your exams, if someone has pericarditis after an MI, always think that you gotta give them aspirin, high doses. Some people even use colchicine. And colchicine is like an anti-inflammatory. In other uh, uh, areas, you can use NSAIDs and those patients.